Are you thinking about moving to Delaware? Well, the chances are you aren't the only one. In a recent article just published, they had this to say about Delaware. The best state to retire in the US is also one of the smallest. Delaware, also known as the first state. We got a little saying here, first state, first place, baby. But it actually just earned the top rank spot in bank rates annual best places to retire. So maybe you're thinking about retiring to Delaware and maybe you're looking at one of these many 55 plus communities that we have here in Delaware. Well, in this video, I'm actually gonna go over some of the pros and cons that come along with living in these communities. And you're definitely gonna wanna stick around to the end because some of them may not be as obvious as you think. But what I can promise you is after watching this video, you're gonna have a lot more information and be able to make a very informed decision on whether or not moving to one of these 55 plus communities is gonna be right for you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Brandon Windham. I help people buy and sell homes here in Delaware. I've lived here my entire life. And on this channel, I talk about what it's like living here in Delaware. And if you're potentially thinking about buying or selling a home here in Delaware, I'd love to have a conversation to see if it made sense for us to work together. So I'll put my info on screen now and again in the description below. Feel free to reach out. But that being said, let's get right into it. So let's start with the pros first. And the first most obvious pro is that everyone who lives in a 55 plus community is at least 55 for the most part. So yes, no young people around. You don't have to worry about somebody burning out donuts in the middle of the parking lot or loud music or parties being had till two in the morning. It's just gonna be an overall quieter and more laid back experience in these 55 plus communities. Because I mean, chances are most of the people in the community are going to be at least 55 plus. So you'll be able to spark up a conversation with your neighbor and not have to break out Google Translate and figure out why someone's talking about not having a cap on or why everything is so demure and very mindful. So the next pro that we're actually gonna go into is going to be a very big one, which is the amenities and the sense of community. So most of the big selling points in these 55 plus communities are definitely gonna be the amenities. Usually there'll be some type of clubhouse or pool or fitness center, golf course, walking trails, pickleball, bocce board, I mean, whatever you can think of, and it might be a multitude of all of them. Now, this is a huge advantage to the people that live in the neighborhood because instead of having to go to a YMCA or a local gym or anything like that, you have that convenience right there in your community. And another component to the community as well is just gonna be the overall sense of community that you get in a 55 plus community. I mean, there's going to be a ton of activities usually, whether it's held by the actual residents that live in there, like groups of, I don't know, um, anything, bridge groups, pool groups, walking groups, any type of group you can think of, they're probably gonna have a meeting time and a place for that, or um, anything else that's a common interest, or you can have something larger scale like a community block party or maybe just community barbecues or anything like that but you'll see them be a lot more prevalent in those 55 plus communities i mean it just depends on how active the residents in the community are and i mean in some of the higher end communities you'll even see like activity directors that you know are there to just keep everybody engaged and to you know to keep you busy and because it's a 55 plus community, and like I said, again, with that sense of community, since you're actually encouraged to get out there and meet your neighbors and interact with your neighbors, whether it's through activities or just day-to-day -day life, a lot of people, they tend to have each other's back, you know? It's not uncommon if you were to get sick for a couple days and your neighbor weren't to see you that they may give you a call or just knock on your door and make sure you're okay because everyone kind of knows everyone in these communities and looks out for everyone. So that's definitely a plus. Now, uh, another pro is going to be the maintenance. Now, in most of these 55 plus communities, the maintenance is going to be taken care of. It's not something you're gonna have to do. So things like landscaping, like mowing the lawn or cutting back hedges or anything like that is gonna be taken care of. And in some cases, even in the rare event that we do have snow here, they'll take care of the snow removal as well. Now, this is you know pretty cool and convenient because let's say you know, you're retired and maybe you like to travel. And if you were to go out of the country or maybe you go on long travel breaks and maybe you're gone for, you know, two, three, four weeks at a time, when you come back, your house isn't gonna look like a jungle in the front yard because 
the community is going to be taking care of you know the landscaping and anything else that you know that needs to be done aesthetically for the most part on your house so it's just one less thing to worry about while you're gone so you can enjoy yourself another huge maintenance thing that you'll see in some of these communities that people don't know about is that they actually take care of most of the exterior of the house as well so in some of these communities things like your roof your siding their power wash all that's covered so if a shingle was to fall off of your roof or there was anything going on with your roof or a piece of siding fell off um it's not going to be your responsibility all you're going to have to do is contact the maintenance company or whoever is in charge of that tell them like hey this happened and they'll come out and take care of it so it's just one less expense and one less headache for you to have to deal with and like i said again it's all about enjoying those retirement another pro is going to be a location uh, most of these 55 plus communities are very like centrally and conveniently located meaning that nine times out of ten they're not going to be in the middle of nowhere they're going to be close to all the necessities that you're going to need such as you know groceries or you know restaurants or things to do anything like that you're probably going to be very close to it you know including healthcare, especially when you get up in age you're going to start taking you know a better look at your health or you know be more cognizant of it so um, usually you have some sort of health care that's close by because when they create these 55 plus communities they put a heavy emphasis on the location because they know people that are maybe up there in age aren't going to want to drive 10 15 20 minutes away to their destination and they needed to be closed so a lot of times these communities are going to be very conveniently located through uh in that particular city or town or whatever whatever you're at now obviously you can't have the good without the bad so let's hop into the cons so the first con um, is going to be uh, restrictive rules now this can be a pretty big one now don't get me wrong I mean I understand without rules you know there would be chaos but in some of these 55 plus communities it can get pretty extensive some of the major ones that I like to highlight that you'll see that are very common and again very major I'm going to just mention them here so the first one is um, the age restriction obviously you know someone whoever buys the house or is living in a house has to be 55 plus but if you're someone like myself that maybe has children or you know want to have grandchildren you know in the future let's say you're in your 55 plus community because you know it's your forever home or what have you if your kids for whatever reason or a family member falls on hard times or just decide they want to come back home maybe after college or something like that chances are they're not going to be able to stay with you a lot of times they have um, a temporary thing where someone can stay for up to 30 days but if they're under that 55 uh, threshold they may not be able to stay with you and for someone like myself that's going to be very important just because if my kids wanted to come back home obviously you know i'm going to welcome them with open arms i want them to come back home i don't even want them to leave ever so in a 55 plus community the hoa is probably going to restrict that so it's definitely something you want to keep an eye out for another common restriction that you're going to see in these 55 plus communities are probably going to be some sort of pet restriction on you know how many pets you can have maybe the weight of them and the potential breed and if you're someone who loves dogs or maybe has more than two or you know more than one or a specific breed you may not be able to have that breed in the 55 plus and i know for a majority of people you know either the dog comes or i don't go so um, that could be a deal breaker as well so you definitely want to you know pay attention to that and i mean there's a bunch of other ones that maybe aren't as major something like maybe you can't have fences or maybe your fences can only be four feet if you like gardening maybe you might not be able to change the landscaping in the home they may put a restriction on how many vehicles you can actually have if you're a vehicle enthusiast or maybe in, if you want to park an rv you, you more than likely probably aren't going to be allowed to do that and there may be restriction on quiet hours so maybe if you're having to get together you know after 10 o'clock you can't be that loud or you know what have you so that's definitely another thing you're going to want to keep in mind so before you move in there you're definitely going to want to get a copy of all the you know HOA rules and restrictions so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into the next con is the HOA fees now i mean i know a big drawing point are these amenities but that big fancy clubhouse or that pool and that maintenance it has to be paid for by somebody 
And that somebody is you. A lot of the HOA fees in these 55 plus communities are a lot higher than ones that aren't in the HOA. The fees in these uh, 55 plus communities are usually higher than you know another community that isn't 55 plus because usually they don't have all the amenities that you know that 55 plus is going to offer like you know the nice clubhouse and everything else or at least you hope that they do have all that stuff as well because some of them are pretty bare bones but these fees can get pretty expensive and um the the scary thing at least to me is that they can just increase and in delaware there is no cap on these HOA fees. So they can rise fast depending on circumstances. So um, quick story, I'll make this quick. I'll actually give an example of this. So in a 55 plus community that you know, I helped someone purchase in, they actually had a mix of townhomes, condos, and the single family homes. So obviously, you know, that community has to have insurance on all those homes and the condos and everything else. So what happened was there was a fire in one of the condo buildings and, you know, they basically had to replace that entire condo building. So as you can expect, that insurance payout was ridiculous. And because of that insurance claim, the insurance actually dropped the community. Now the community can't go without insurance. So they had to find another provider and come to find out the only provider that they could find was, you know, four to five times more expensive than their previous one. And because of that, that cost gets passed on to the residents. So people saw their HOA fees almost triple within a couple months. And I don't know about you, but you know, tripling the HOA fee, especially if it's already $500, $600 a month, is crazy you know that can definitely put you in a very financial strain and kind of be a deal breaker for you so you definitely want to keep that in mind those hoa fees um, when you're looking at a 55 plus community so another con is uh the lack of diversity i mean it goes without saying it's a 55 plus community so if you're someone who likes to you know talk with you know the younger generation or just like see a bunch of different people instead of you know the older population if you like to see those new families and you know people playing with their kids or the kids running in the street or talking to the youth that's not going to be a thing in that community because of the age restriction and another thing that people tend to forget is that you know i know it's a 55 plus community and just because the minimum age is 55 plus doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be you know 55 in that community you may get there and come to find out that majority of the people that live there are you know in their 70s 75 or even 80 and if you're someone who is potentially you know on the younger side of that spectrum it may you know affect you detrimentally you know you're being around all these older you know older people you're like man there's a lot of old people around here i don't be around all these old people so that's just something you want to keep in mind uh when you're buying as well just because you don't know what the what the actual demographic of that neighborhood may be age-wise so you might be coming there thinking oh yeah you know i'm gonna be around another you know other 55 60 year olds and you know all those people are 80 and maybe they're less active so you know, that's something to keep in mind. So another con is just the overall investment aspect of it. I mean, your home is where a big, big majority of your wealth is actually kept and passed on. So let's just say from an investment standpoint, maybe you're someone who, what we call here uh, a snowbird, someone, you know, during those winter months, you flee from the cold and perhaps maybe your house is vacant for, you know, a couple months on end and you decide, hey, what, you know what? I, I wanna make a couple extra dollars. Let's try to Airbnb this thing or maybe do a short term rental in a 55 plus community. Chances are that's not going to be allowed. It's going to be restricted that they don't allow short term rentals or Airbnbs. Or let's just say you decided like, hey, you know, this 55 plus community really isn't for me anymore. And instead of selling the house, maybe you want to rent it because you want to get some of that sweet passive income that everybody's talking about. Again, chances are in that 55 plus community, you're not going to be able to rent that house even as a long term rental. It's probably going to be restricted. Or let's just say you want to sell the thing for whatever reason, when you're going to sell that home, it, it may be a little bit harder because your buyer pool is way smaller. You're looking for a specific buyer that has to be at least 55. Maybe they only have to have one dog. Maybe they have three dogs. So it's going to shrink your buyer pool a lot. And depending on the market conditions, it could make the house, you know, very hard to sell. 
So that's definitely something you want to keep in mind because if you can't sell it, obviously you're going to be stuck living there or you may take a loss. Maybe you can't sell it for what it was, what you bought it for or whatever the case may be. But you definitely need to think about that as um, an in, from the investment standpoint. And if you're wondering if you should retire to Delaware, good news, I actually made another video discussing that right here.